Calm down. Okay. Fuel control is designed to regulate pressure, not volume. All right. Where the hell was it? Okay. Uh, example operations. So let me see. One, two, three, four. This is just why, why I pick some numbers. I don't know. Okay. Example. That should be like F or whatever. <coughs> And again, this is a little redundant from what we did with pressure carbs. Some of you are like, oh, thank God, because I didn't get that. So, um, so one. So, air metering force is? Air metering force is, but I haven't seen an A or a B yet. So, I'm going to go Venturi. Venturi. Venturi plus impact. What's that Venturi T impact? Why did you write Venturi T impact, Kevin? Venturi, like on Rhea? Venturi? Fuel metering force. Is what? Unmetered. 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 Minus metered. So, same thing. We just don't have A, B, C, D. All right, so again, let's, we did this before. Let's look at what happens <coughs> from, we'll say, cruise to full throttle or from partial throttle, throttle to more partial, to more throttle. It's an unspecific amount. It's just more. Some to more. It's not idle. And there we go. Uh, all right. So for um, assume, so we're going to make up some numbers here. Assume uh, air metering force. Metering force is, what did I put here? Um, two. Two. So what would that mean? Air, air metering force. There's no metered air. So it's two. We could say one Venturi plus one uh, impact. It doesn't matter. They're just made up numbers. The score doesn't matter. All right, so fuel. And before I write this next part, what do we have to have the pop it valve? Yeah, what's the word? Balanced. Balanced, Balanced equilibrium. equilibrium. Balanced is probably a better word I have to use, but fuel from fuel from pump. Fuel pump obviously. Passes through. Passes through metering jet. Metering jet into one chamber. Into one chamber. That'd be the uh, way it passes to the metering jet. That's the out, outboard, if you will. Uh, one chamber and direct into the other. And direct into the other chamber. Just so we're all on the same page here. We can kind of take a look at that. So what we say? Fuel comes in goes through the metering orifice. Is that what I said, metering orifice? Yep. Metering, jet. metering jet, thank you. Metering jet into one chamber and direct into the other. <clears throat> right, so unmetered fuel, that's fuel pressure, uh, fuel inlet pressure. So there we go, got it? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna leave it on this picture and then I'll come back and write this. But assume that the fuel metering force is, what should it be to be in equilibrium? Okay, it's also got to be two. So we have air metering force, we had one and one, and that's two, so air metering force, air metering force equals two. So the fuel metering force also equals two, and what numbers did I give these things? Let me see here. Um, it's not one and one, right? Four minus two. Four minus two would work, what did I say? Um, I said five minus three, so five, which one's five? Five and two. Three. Okay. Three. So that's five 
minus 3. That's also 2, right? Yeah. Okay, so uh, let's think about that. You know, let's make sure we're all on the same page. So I've got going to the right. I've got going to the right. That one, yeah? Mm -hmm. This one, yeah? Mm -hmm. This one, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that equals 5. That's crazy. Okay, and that one's 5. So we're balanced out, right? Okay, here's where it changes just a little bit. And I'll come back. I don't know if we're writing this or not. All right, so um, the forces are equal, and the regulator servo valve is held in fixed position with the correct amount of fuel delivery, right? So fuel is going to right amount. The pop is going to be open just the right amount. That's going to go out to the flow divider. Okay. Where it goes to the flow divider, it's just a manifold with, we'll say, an inlet and six holes and just goes out six different ways. Boom. So far, it's very easy, right? It's not going to get much more complicated if that's what you're worried about. So let's just say we open the throttle a little bit more. All right? So airflow increases, creating a higher pressure. Where? We'll go through this time. All right, so air metering force increases, so we got to increase these two right here. We'll just say, um, well, that would just, no, because I didn't write that in my notes. So don't say that. <laughs> and one thing I've learned, boy, if I go off the notes and I start thinking off the top of my head, I'll be telling you all kinds of crazy shit. Let's just say it goes up by half. So air metering force each. So it's 1.5 and 1.5. 1, 1. How about that? So now it's three. So what's that going to do to the poppet valve? Open it to the right. Gonna go to the right. All right, where are we going? Regulator valve moves to the right, opening the outlet. All right. What's gonna happen to five here? Increase. How did that increase? Because of the no. It's got a diaphragm fuel pump. Fuel, fuel pump increase, increases flow. Well, yeah, it's going to increase flow. We know we're going to have to increase flow because we just increased the throttle. But how are we going to get there? What's going to happen there to the unmetered fuel? Increase pressure. Well, let's see, I was just talking about this chamber right here where the five is. Diaphragm fuel pump. Am I going? Maximum pressure is at which which zero zero flow. So the more flow I get, remember that curve? It comes around and it starts to drop off when it reaches kind of the end of its. So what it, what was it between zero and like a lot more than the engine needed? I mean, because remember the guy kept saying. That's enough to run two 540s, right? So one pump, and they were showing this this graph. It would probably help if I went backwards so you'd see it. It went this way, right, and then down, because to me that's the wrong yeah. way. All right, but they were talking about if that one pump was running two IO 540s. That's 12 cylinders that this thing was running. It's meant to run one engine, but it was run both. When it got all the way to, like, wide open throttle on both engines, eh, it started to fall off a little bit. Let's go back to it just running one engine. It was pretty much perfect all the way across the board. And what happened to the pressure? Stay the same. So what is five going to do? Stay the same. But why is it staying the same now? I mean, before we had a pressure regulator called the discharge nozzle. So every time the fuel pressure went up, it would open more and let more flow. You don't have a discharge nozzle. There's no discharge. What's going on? You're releasing yeah. more fuel you're out releasing, of yeah, Why is the five constant? Because you're releasing the, flow. You're releasing the, the flow as much as you are the pressure. It's, it's equal. You're just letting it out. The way I see it is the pump just puts out that pressure. It's more or less a constant all the time because it's spring-driven. And oh, the spring spring pushes driven. down on a diaphragm that pushes the fuel in. You can only push it down so much. Right. But it does it the same all the time. Yeah. You guys follow that? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so would you say there is fluctuation in the five? No. no. I would, and I hate it when people talk about it. There's pre it's fluctuations, but it's yeah. kind of taken care of when you see the other side. You go, okay, so if that went up, this would kind of work out. Yeah. But for the most part, it's constant because the, pressure's constant. the, the pump pressure is relatively constant. Follow? Yeah. 
Oh, I was going to bring in Skittles. And throw them at you. I even told my wife, oh, give me back a Skittle. She goes, why? So I can throw them at Andrea. Why would you do that? Oh, just don't worry about it. Because <laughs> she's the only one in class. <laughs> Ask questions later. Ask questions later. Just give me damn Skittles. Okay, follow? <laughs> Not the sour ones. Huh? As I'm trying to. It's a rhetorical so, question. So the only It's a diaphragm fuel pump, and the faster you spin the engine, it's the same spring. You can turn the engine idle, same spring is pushing. You can turn as fast as you want, it's the same spring pushing. So if you got the same spring trying to push the fuel, because remember, the only way that the diaphragm pump gets any pressure is because you have a diaphragm with a spring pushing on it that pushes the fuel out. It's not constant displacement. So it is a variable displacement. It'll pump it out as much as it needs to a point. When it gets to a certain point and it can't keep up, then you start losing pressure. That's because the diaphragm has pushed all the fuel out and the engine says more. You're like, hey, I just pushed it all out. And you're gonna see pressure start to drop. Mm-hmm. Otherwise it's full and you're only taking this much down here. So it just pushes a little bit, but you have all this fuel. So follow? Okay, so that stays at five. Well, so we have three over here. What does this need to be now? Uh, (laughs) So this needs to be at a two. Well, notice the red up here, we were at three. So now we have fuel metering force. Fuel metering force equals five minus two, which equals three. So we're in equilibrium. But so, whoa, wait a minute. This is so different. Okay, so... Unmetered, unmetered stayed the same. Why was it a pressure carb? What stayed the same? Metered. Metered. Okay, now it's unmetered stays the same. And we just dropped pressure out in this chamber with the outlet here. Because you increased the flow. There you go. The flow increased. I opened the orifice more so the pressure dropped. In in um, in the metered fuel. Follow. Less restriction. Open it up, but you see how it stayed in balance, just the same. So the poppet valve opened more. That was our goal, but it did it in a different way with the fuel metering force. So now we have more fuel flowing out of this this pressure regulator. More flow going into the flow divider, which goes to the cylinders. We have more flow. Good thing because we added more air a minute ago. All right, did we follow that? Yeah. An analog computer, keep saying that, doesn't help. So are they still calling that C? Nope, <laughs> nope. There is no A, B, C, or D. It is Venturi, impact air, unmetered fuel, and metered fuel. All right, where am I? Well, let's just run. The, what happens when I close the throttle off? You're going to have less airflow. We can try that. No, less airflow. Where do you want to go? We had one and one. We go all the way down to 0.5 and 0.5. Okay. I don't know if this will work out. One. So air metering force one. equals one. Okay. Fuel metering force. Five. So right. This should be the same. So it's five yes. minus... Four. Okay, so this now went up to four. You close the you close the I closed the poppet. So the pressure went up. So it equals one. So the poppet closed down, which means less fuel coming out, which is good because they just closed the throttle. It's so simple. It's the easiest week I think there is actually because it is that simple. All right, so now we can add a little more complexity to this. Um, it's not that much complex. I'm trying to figure out what the purpose of the diaphragm between the metered and unmetered fuel is. I feel like it can work without it. No. Between the meter yeah, here? That guy. Yeah. No, because those two forces have to work. The five. Five is constant, though. Yeah, but it's still pushing. 
I see what you're saying. If it's a constant, why not get rid of it and put a spring or something in there? Yeah. Okay, well, the thing is, we have to look at it a little more logical. What happens if the pressure went up to 5.5 in here? Because there's going to be fluctuations. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know, this goes up to messy 5.5 right there. Closes it, just a little bit more, which increases the resistance. Oh, it closes it more, not closes it, right? No, no, no it's it it pushing to the left. So if the fuel pump pressure goes up, it's going to go up in both chambers. And what do I need it to do if the pressure goes up to keep the flow the same? Flow is the same. Pressure's gone up. But the pressure went up, so the orifice needs to go smaller. Go smaller. How do I get it to go smaller? A little more pressure here. All right, but you're going to get a little, it's, you're going to still have a rise of pressure over on this, which you don't necessarily want, but you're going to get it. So it's going to close this off a little bit to compensate for the higher pressure on both sides. If it didn't have, a, if you didn't have some sort of compensating thing for the fluctuation of pressure over here in the unmetered fuel, you had a constant fixed spring and the pressure went up, then the pressure would go up in the metered and it would open it up more. So that increase, do you follow, you guys follow that? Yeah. Okay, let's say it again. Let me see, let me erase all this. Can I erase all the ink without screwing this up? Okay, if, if, yeah. If the pressure went up here, so put a plus for more pressure, you're going to get more pressure here and here. Mm -hmm. All right. If this was a spring that was just set at a constant, what would happen if I add more pressure in this chamber? It would open it more. It's gonna it would open, it open it more. So I have more pressure. It opens it more, and now I'm going to get more Flow. flow, but I didn't change anything with the air metering force. So what's no. the engine going to do now? It's going to run rich. So now if we plummet to both sides and the pressure goes up, it goes up on both oh. sides in, to equalize it, so to it, equalize it and compensate. Okay. So it'll go up in the metered, which will help close it more. It went up a little bit in the um, metered side, in theory it shouldn't do much, but uh, because it's got that orifice there, but that will still close down some, which keeps the flow the same. All right, complexity. I'm gonna warn you now, I hate these drawings with a little egg in there half the time. All right, so yeah, it looks like a little egg right there. Oh. Yeah, and some of these drawings, I'm like, what? Why did you do it that way? Okay. So here we go. We've seen this. We got venturi suction, airflow. What was the problem with the uh, pressure carbs at idle? No venturi suction, no impact. How have things changed? They haven't. Yeah, they haven't. All right. So we got now the bad thing is they call these things by really horrific names. Um, not an idle spring, but there's the constant head spring and the constant effort spring. I don't have the constant effort one in here. We'll get to that one. But what does it look like it's doing? Idle spring. Okay. We'll get more into those later. But you got an idle spring. So there you go. So what kind of fuel flow am I going to get at idle? Enough. 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 Okay. So we've added so added an idle spring, which you understand how that works. Okay, so fuel comes in. But now we've added a mixture control. And they drew it kind of funny here. It's blocking it completely off, but I'm assuming it's not actually. But that would make sense if it controls not only fuel going to this chamber, but also fuel to this chamber. Because when I lean it out, I don't want to just lean out one side because if I were to just make this orifice smaller and smaller and smaller, let's think about that. Yeah. <laughs> if five, if this remains constant at a five and the fuel flow has, or the airflow, air metering force stays the same, 
and I start closing this off, what does that do to the pressure in this chamber here? If this chamber decreases, what's going to happen to the poppet? So I think we're going to have an exponential effect we don't want to have. But what if I decrease the pressure here and decrease the pressure here at the same time? Well, what's the air metering force hasn't changed, so what is it going to want to do? Open. Open. want to open a little bit? So you're just not going to have much pressure, well, you're still going to have... If you bring it down just as, at the same rate, if those two are equalized, the air should... Well, they are equal, so everything's in equalized, and we slow down the fuel flow coming in, then we're going to slow it going out. Yeah. Let's go with that. <laughs> no. No, because if it did, then that would screw everything up. Less fuel flow through. Less fuel flow through. Um, and by dropping a little bit of, let me see, drop a little. It's going to, it's going to, we just go with that. It's going to decrease the flow out. Okay. The idle valve. So the idle valve is going to be in play. Idle through about mid range okay. and even a little bit more because after this, the only orifice we have is discharge. the discharge nozzles, which are fixed orifice. So this comes into play just like the pressure carb with the idle spring. So you got to have that for the idle spring. Yep. So I'll call it the idle needle, if you will. All right. So fuel flows through here into the flow divider. The flow divider is going to have, I'm going to say two functions. The Lycoming flow divider is different than the Continental flow divider. The Lycoming flow divider has V slots in it. And imagine if you will, I don't want to put this, a slot that is in the shape of a V. I can't write on that slot. With a slider that goes up and down. So when the slider is down and you have just this little tiny bottom of the V showing. Follow? Nope. Okay. How does it change? Is that the needle? You have a slot. And fuel flows to that slot. Okay. But you have a slider there. They can move up and down. That's to block it off. Yep. Okay. So right now, the only thing that's open is right so down here. Yeah. At the bottom. Bottom. So this little... Yep. yep. Okay. okay. So Lycoming does this. So at idle, not only do you have this idle valve, this throttle valve, but you also have a very small V slot. You want to increase your pressure. Are you talking to your girlfriend over there? Is she doing okay? Yeah, she is. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, it's not distracting at all to me or anything, so don't worry about it. Um, as the fuel flow and pressure increase going to the flow divider, this will go up and open up the whole V-slot. And that's its normal operation then. So Lycoming flow dividers do help uh, manage fuel at idle. Continental goes through great extremes to not let that happen. They've got a double pop it so that you have to, it waits and waits until it has the right fuel pressure, then it says, now we go. It goes from nothing all the way open, just that fast. All right, so we'll get to that some other day. Uh, okay, so fuel flows around, goes through here, goes to the V slots. There's a little spring and such in here that, so I said it had two functions. One, it does, um, I'm missing the word, but it does uh, control fuel at idle. That's not the word I wanted. Uh, meter fuel at idle. And two, provides a clean, positive shutoff valve. I guess three, it distributes the fuel evenly to all cylinders in theory. Yes, because you don't want it dribbling because then you get that run on. All right, but now this is going to be key to understanding, the, yeah. Would that cutoff kind of also increase your fuel pressure? Or Yeah, it's going to help, yeah. Because with the smaller nozzle, you're going to get yeah, back right. pressure. All right, so it flows through the flow divider into the nozzles, all four or six of them. But notice this. I have a flow meter here. The flow meter could have just been attached like that. So the flow meter is the seventh cylinder. 
think about that. So if I have six cylinder engine, six cylinder engine, I'm going to make seven ports. One, two, three, four, five, six go to cylinders. The seventh one goes to flow meter. So what, how is the flow meter actually measuring flow? Little wheel. There is no little wheel. Notice it's one line pressure. going to it. Oh. It is nothing more True. than a pressure gauge. Yeah. Yeah. What? It's a pressure gauge. It's a pressure gauge, but somebody raced all the PSI on it and wrote GPH, <laughs> gallons per hour. It's calibrated. It's calibrated. Okay. So, but you have to understand something. That only works when everything else works. So what happens if for some reason I increase the pressure in the, the flow divider? Increase flow. Yep. So what would happen if I blocked off two nozzles. I mean, right. I just took, I kinked the lines off. Oh, increase the flow. You have all, you flow. Increase your flow. What would the gauge tell the pilots happening? Increase your flow because you have more pressure. I have create more pressure. Yeah. I'm sending the same amount of fuel out to the flow divider. Yeah. Two yeah. cylinders are now dead, so it's trying to flow through the other four orifices. So it's just fighting it. Mm -hmm. So what happens to the pressure inside the, the nozzle, <laughs> the flow divider? <laughs> that pressure goes through the roof. And so what does the pilot say? Whoa, my gallons per hour is huge. So what do they do? Pull back the mixture. Kill your engine. Okay, so you have to understand the flow divider is a pressure gauge calibrated to read gallons per hour, and it only works correctly when everything is correct. So it lies to the pilot. So when they come in and say, man, my engine is running terrible. It must be so rich because my, my, my gallons per hour gauge is just leaning over the needle bent. It's on the stop, you know? So what's the first thing you do? You think, okay, you're not flowing high. You actually have high pressure. What's causing high pressure? So whenever a pilot starts talking about their gallons per hour on the system, stop and, and put in your head correct. He's saying pressure, but he you flow, but he's really talking pressure to me. You don't have to explain it to him. So the only time that you would actually talk fuel flow for real, and that's where I'd want to know, you know, what, what type of flow system do you have? If they have like, you know, I put on my plane a JPI system, it has a little wheel and the flow is really the flow. So if they came back and said something, I ran, I don't get it, man. My, uh, my ship's gauge, because some, some of these engine analyzers, you're not allowed to take out your other instruments. You have to have both. They're not considered a primary. So he's saying my ship's gauge, you know, the one that came with my, my Cessna, it says my flow is really, really high, but yet my JPI says it's really, really low. How could that be? Hmm. Well, it's easy. That one's a pressure gauge. That one's a flow. So your pressure went up and your flow went down. Right? So follow? It's going to be very important for that. What else do I got here? I don't know. Oh, that's just with an AMC. Uh, all right, let's do this. Get you caught up. Well, that was a lot of like five this, two that. Do I need to write all that? Let me see. Five fuel. Okay. Yeah, because then it goes. Assume that. Do you want me to write that? Nope. Okay. Yes, I, and sometimes I call it a poppet valve, but just to help you out. Uh, I'm just going to ask you some questions off this. How about that for right this minute? Sure. <laughs> Good, I'm glad you liked it. Uh, let's see. We did what happens if throttles closed. Uh, what can we deduct from this? What happens if the metering jet is removed and both sides of the fuel chamber are equal? Oh. Mm. What happens if I remove that and well I'll start there what happens if I remove that what happens to my balance let's go with that why would it close
Right. So if this. You're only going to have one pushing that way, and then you're going to have. Tell him, Tweety. <laughs> okay, so that's five, then that's five. So that. Those are equal. So five minus. Air metering force that's opening it. So fuel metering force is fuel me is five minus five, which equals. Zero. Zero. And if this is a one and one, what happens? You got to open. Yep. Got to open way too much. Okay. You're going to get all the fuel. What happens if the metering jet is very small? Then you're not going to get a lot of fuel. You're going to get very lean. So if that's five, then this one becomes two. Somebody said one. Okay, I'll go with one. It's too small. So that becomes fuel metering force is five minus one equals four. And the, and the air metering force is two. Four close, two open. Air meter forces too. So what's it going to do? Close. Close. Okay. See, metering jet's very small. Difference would be great in the valve. Would. So what would the valve do? Close. Would it close? Got one that way. One that way. And we got, we got four, four going that, that way, way and one going that way. So we have four. Yep, it'd close off pretty bad, wouldn't it? Um, yeah. Would I have enough? Would there be, ever be enough pressure where it just kept closing? Would it close the idle too? Close the idle, resist the idle spring? I don't, I don't know. I don't it. think so. I mean, that'd be kind of a weird thing, but could. I don't know. Uh, let's see here. What happens if the impact tube system is plugged? Um, well, yes, then we get into altitude changes. I want to do that right now. Um, what happens if we, if we have a drop in, we'll just say that, a drop in um, impact tube? What happens? Okay. Um, let's see. What happens if we have a little bit of an air leak right here? You don't have air metering force anymore. <laughs> All right. Um, see this little, there's a little seal right there. What happens if we get a leak in that seal? Air, air in the fuel. Air in the fuel? Well, I don't know about that. This has, what, 5 PSI? How much air flow? So, yeah, you're going to get fuel out into your... Tubes and the, so fuel starts leaking into here. Don't fill up there. What's it going to do there? Could run rich. Also, you'd see some blue staining and stuff when you shut down the <laughs> aircraft. You should not be getting fuel out of those. All right. Um, wow, that was a lot. I hope you wrote stuff down. Okay. Moving on. Let's talk about the idle circuit. So F. So when a meters fuel at the flow divider, that's only for idle? That's, or? Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see. As with a pressure carb, as with the pressure carb um, and float carb, not enough air, not enough air flows across Venturi. at idle to work. So two springs 
are installed on either side of the air diaphragm. Two springs are either side of the air diaphragm. Well, let's point those out. What can I do with this slide? Nope. Yeah. Right there. Mm -hmm. spring the constant spring. effort spring and the constant head idle spring. Yes. Yeah, springs. Okay, nice thing is you put idle on that one. Yeah. So you can call it idle spring if you want. I'm okay with that. A constant effort. So we can't call it No. I will not allow it. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, one. So one. The constant head idle spring. Constant head idle idle spring is in the that's not what I wanted. this one shows it in the impact that one shows it in the impact I just want to make sure uh, this one shows it in blue. <laughs> Don't you love that? Which one? No, Venturi is the, sorry. Yeah, Vin, Venturi is the blue. Blue. So it is in which chamber? Venturi. But it didn't show it that way in a minute ago, did it? What fun that is. Because my notes clearly say, constant idle spring in the Venturi, in the Venturi air chamber. The air chamber helps add air, add air, metering force at idle. Oh, slash low RPM, if you like. Low RPM. And this helps keep ball off its seat. Now, when I say ball, there's actually a little ball at the end of the poppet valve. So we did talk about the ball. They don't really say pot, it's the ball off the seat. You follow that? Can you see a picture? Instead of a needle, it's a ball. Ball valve, right there. <laughs> see it? Ball valve, ball valve. As the RPM increases, spring is compressed into a housing that effectively keeps the spring from adding additional force. I think I have a picture of that. Let me see. Um, constant effort. I don't. What's the matter? <laughs> All right, I do not have. Oops. Yeah, I'll get rid of that. Helps keep it off its seat. Um, be as RPM as RPM increase, uh, spring is compressed into a housing. Spring is com is compressed into a housing that effectively. keeps spring from adding additional force. <coughs> so 
So it's only used at idle, which is to say that. And a bit of a repeat, so the constant head idle spring pushes onto servo onto servo shaft or pop it if you like. Servo shaft which opens servo valve or ball valve. Spring number two is the constant effort spring. Constant effort spring. It's in the impact air chamber. Let's verify that. Constant bigger constant effort spring constant effort spring is in the impact air chamber impact blue I mean yellow yellow impact air chamber yes we are correct constant effort spring in the impact air chamber in the impact air chamber Supplements. Yeah, it means helps. All right, the constant effort sp spring in the air chamber supplements the transition from idle to servo regulator control, and just it just it helps. It's a transition. It's a transition. They could have called it that transition spring. So it helps go from the idle to off idle circuit. So, but I'm going to write it in a much more difficult way. Supplements the transition. from idle to servo regulator control. Control um, and spring helps <laughs> move diaphragm. Are you okay? Yeah, it reminds me of the previous conversation. Oh, smoothly. From low to higher power settings. From low to higher power settings. Period. Therefore. <laughs> There you go. Shock. I could have wrote that. That would have been so much easier. Why didn't you say something sooner? Shock absorber. All right, we'll pick it up here tomorrow. Yeah.